Well, all right, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's another Glorious Wednesday. And you know what time it is, folks. Get your crumpets together because, baby, it's time to dish tea. And you are dishing tea with Big Meats. Hello to all of my tea sippers out there. Yes, I know you guys were you guys were expecting our regular opener. However, uh, this song here, "Love for Christmas," is by Mr. Quentin Denard the second. He's one of my my little nephews, honey, that I've adopted, and uh, this is his brand new Christmas single. He let me have the exclusive for playing it, so I decided to use it as the opener today. I hope you guys enjoy it. We'll talk about that more later. Right now, I want to say hello to all of you once again. If you want to get in on the conversation. With questions or comments or concerns, please give us a call. The number here is 347-205-9183. Again, 347-205-9183, okay? Now, let me say my disclaimer. You know, I have to say this because, you know, I do have a potty mouth at times. But uh, I want you to know that Dishing Tea, the show, is, is for mature audiences, and the language and subject matters are not appropriate for children or anyone who is not mature to handle the subject matter. So your listening discretion is advised, okay? Your listening discretion is advised. I want to thank you to all of my sponsors who are believing in what Dishing Tea is standing for, Trade Day Management and PR Firm. At Trade Day, enjoy a touch of Southern hospitality with a universal appeal. For your public relations and entertainment management needs, contact Travion Davenport at 678-523-3088. Once again, 678-523-3088, excuse me, or email her at tradaypr at gmail.com. Trade Day, T-R-E-A-D-A-Y-P-R at gmail.com. Also, thank you goes out to Pharaoh's Treasure Box, fine art, unique jewelry, and sensational 3D silk floral arrangements, creations by TAPS. For all of your decorative needs, contact Pharaoh's Treasure Box at 248-688-5178 or 5179, or email them at Pharaoh's Treasure Box at Comcast.net. Thank you once again to Parisian Wine Productions, music to lighten your spirits and lift your soul, specializing in gospel and inspirational house and dance music. Productions, uh, for production assistance, please contact Paris Hairston, the CEO, at Paris42268 at yahoo.com. Once again, that's Paris42268 at yahoo.com. Thank you goes out to C-Train Productions. You're aboard the right train for all of your entertainment needs with C-Train Productions. Omar Casserly, CEO and founder, for all of your casting, producing, and production needs, contact Omar at www.ctrainproductions.com. Also, thank you goes out to Life Fellowship of Christ Ministries. Live in freedom everywhere, L-I-F-E, life. Reverend James Coleman, the leader and founder of this ecumenical social justice ministry, brought forth to free the oppressed and introducing a fresh approach to the Christ consciousness. Contact Reverend Coleman at mustard seed at I'm sorry, mustard coal at yahoo.com. Mustard coal at yahoo.com. Services are held at the Woodbridge Estates Clubhouse at 4106 Supremes Drive, Detroit, Michigan. 48201. Services start 12 noon. For more information, contact 313-833-9278. So that's to all of my sponsors. Thank you so much. For all of you who are there, if you're over in the tea room, honey, please make sure that you chat responsibly. I want you to, I encourage you to um, to network and get to know one another over there. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, I ask that you just post, post them up in there. And as I'm flipping back from page to page, I'll be sure to answer them, okay? So, y'all forgive me, honey, because I'm a little bit groggy. I had a long night at work. Um, Yeah, the donut factory, honey, worked me over, baby. But it's okay because I'm starting to feel my muse and I'm starting to get very excited because my guest, oh, my God, I have to say thank you. First off, to uh, Mr. Calvin Carson for for uh, being so inspirational for for me and to me for this because my guest today, honey, I I titled the show "Pioneering and Trailblazing" because 
My guest is one of our pioneers, honey, who have taken the theater and television world by storm. She has a list of credits to her to her name, and she has just been a force to be reckoned with. And all of you know her best as the only woman, honey, who was able to keep Fred Sanford at bay. Donna Harris was Fred Sanford's girlfriend, and my guest, you know her as Donna, but her name is Lynn Hamilton. Lynn, my darling, I thank you so much for being a part of Dishing Tea. Welcome, my darling. Welcome, welcome, and welcome again. Well, good morning, and thank you so much. It is a pleasure for me to be on Dishing Tea. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I'm looking out of my window. It's uh, it. It's, I'm in Los Angeles, as you know, and we, we, have, we, we don't get rain often, and we had a, a, a wonderful two days of rain the past few days, and everything, God has washed everything clean. I'm looking out on my cactus garden and speaking to you, and I can't think of a better way to start a morning. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's absolutely, it's absolutely true. Oh, my goodness. You know, I had to, I, 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 I'm sitting over here, I'm tingling, and I'm gushy and all of that. Oh, because I can't believe that. I, no, and the reason why, <laughs> you have to understand, the reason why is because everyone who knows me, they know I love the English language. And you have a way with just projecting and enunciating your words to where, I, that's what I love that about women. You know, women, have, women today don't, don't have that, that, that charisma that women of, of, of the day used to. And you exude that so wonderfully. And I'm sitting over here saying, oh, my gosh, she is fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I want to get started. I'm going to share this story, uh, and, and it's going to lead into my question. My great aunt, my grandmother's sister, uh, was, oh, she loved me dearly, and I'm, and, and, and I'm, I'm honoring her because she passed on. Uh, aunt Willa May, this was uh, late 80s, early 90s, when I told her, you know, yes, I'm an actor and I'm going to school and blah, blah, blah. And she used to always tell me, oh, that's good. That's, that's nice. But you need, a jo- you need a job. And I want you to go down to the county building and apply for this job, the clerk typist job. And you go down, not the city county building, the county building, and you go down there. And, uh, honey, when I tell you she sent me the classified uh, uh, advertisement, and she sent me bus fare to and from. So there was no excuse for me not to go get this job. And I shared all that to say this was, like I said, the late 80s, early 90s, and this was from someone who, you know, the the industry has had flourished and African Americans were, you know, we were doing more and, and, and we had a lot of stage work, and that happened to me. What was it like for you back in your beginnings where the struggle was making sure that we were emancipated and making sure that we were marching for our civil rights, and you said and chose, I'm going to be an actress? Ah, uh. Well, I, I need I need to go back a, a, a little further than that. When my, I'm told, oh, by the way, I was born in the Mississippi Delta. Mm-hmm. I was born in Yazoo City, Mississippi, and uh, when I was a, a little girl, uh, this was before television. So I'm I'm telling you my age, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my my mom my mom listened to radio soap operas, uh, soap operas yes, on the radio, yes. and uh, that and, and I listened to those wonderful stories. And I said to I said to my mother, you know, when I grew Grow up. I'm going to be a moving star. I, I didn't know it was a movie star. Right. So, but they, they, they said something like, "Well, that's wonderful, baby. Of course you will." My parents were always very, uh, very encouraging. After after a while, with the migration to. Uh, uh, to the north, my family moved to Chicago, and when I got to Chicago, and when I got into to, into uh, uh, drama uh, schools, uh, high school, and, and I, uh, I inquired about a, a dramatic uh, club of some sort. Mm-hmm. Well, they, of course, uh, they all thought that I was crazy because there just weren't any uh, uh, any work for actors or, or weren't any black actors around at that time. Um, but it, but I was persistent, and I did get in the dramatic club, and from that point on, I. Uh, 
I was able to, as I grew up, I, I was fairly attractive. I was able to get into the modeling profession, and um, and and at, at which point I discovered the Goodman Theater, which is in Chicago. Mm. And I went to the Goodman Theater for four years and got my BA degree and learned all I could about acting because I th- I felt that were I to become an actress, it was necessary that I know my craft, that I that 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 I I am able to to do. Uh, Everything I felt that I needed to be versatile, and, mm-hmm. and so I worked uh, in the, in the theater at night, and I, uh, uh, little little you know little little South Side uh, dramatic clubs, the Skyloft Players I think was the first one that I that I joined, and that's where I really got my um, got my experience because I was the only black. Um, at that point, I don't think we we were, we were referring to ourselves as black at that point. In time. Okay, right. <laughs> I was the only I was the only only Negro in my class at the Goodman Theater in Chicago, and so I, I they there weren't any roles for me, and so I was able to supplement my experience by working in 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a black theater company on Chicago's South Side, and that was the beginning. And of course, after that point, I I went to New York, and and things started to pick up for me there. Oh wow. You know, now, I see your resume. You have done a lot of television work um, Mm -hmm. versus a lot of film. And uh, with your earlier careers being theater, what was that transition like to go from stage acting uh, to television, considering that it was still brand new at the time? It was very interesting because I – I was not really prepared to, for for the camera. I, you're absolutely right. It's, it's a whole different um, uh, 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 mode of mode of operandi to work on the stage. Everything is big. I mean, it's yes. big because you've got to project to. The, they, they say uh, on Broadway you need to project to, to you know to the, the fourth balcony in the back row, and so. The first, I had a screen test for something that I did not get. I don't recall the name of it now because I was really terrible. I saw the screen test, and of course, I was, <laughs> I was. Everything was too big. It was just too big. It, it was mm-hmm. for the film, for, for for film work. And I and then, of course, I had to, I had to then uh, make an adjustment, uh, which I did. I took some classes in film acting, and because everything has to be, mo- everything has to be contained uh, on for the camera. And but you, but but you still need. To, as a matter of fact, it's in some sense, it's it's more difficult to do because because you, you you cannot use your voice and use your body. You cannot be big. Everything has to be inside. Yes, you have, God. You have to feel it. You have to feel it. And if you feel it, hopefully, uh, you it, it will it will project uh, you know onto the screen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it was it was quite a transition. But um, I I'm uh, very fortunate that uh, I was able to make it. Okay, and, and you have because as I've watched you over the years, of course you come into my consciousness at uh, Sanford and Son. Okay, <laughs> it's so amazing that show is still so popular. I, it, it just, I'm just very, very moved by by the fact that people still love that show. Oh my God, honey! You, well, it, it's it's a staple of our heritage, you know. Now, the storylines may not have been, you know, probably their greatest writings, but it was the best that we had at the time. We had African Americans on on exactly. television and we saw us, you know, telling exactly. our stories, you know. Exactly. And and for and, and excuse me, I just no. I, I need to say it was primarily because of Red Fox. The man was an absolute genius in so far as comedy is concerned. He could make he could say good morning, <laughs> and, and, and 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 we'd and, and we'd all you know fall into hysterical laughter. <laughs> okay. He, he he he. It was due to Red because you're absolutely right. The stories within themselves were not particularly uh, deep or, or or informative, but uh, but Red Fox made that show, and 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 he. I think he's one of the, one of the greatest comedians around. Unfortunately. Uh, you know, he left us too soon. Yes. And, you know, what was that like being on the set with uh, Mr. Fox and uh, that entire casting? How did that uh, change and shape your world? Uh, interestingly enough, when the show first came on, my agent sent me down, and I, I got the part of 
of um, uh, the, the a landlady. I think I think the, the story had Lamont leaving home again. He, uh, you know, right. He, he, he was going to leave home. He's, he's going to find himself an apartment and be on his own. Well, he he got an apartment. I think uh, in in a building that I managed and I played the landlady. I didn't even have a name. I was just the landlady. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I had one scene. And I came on and I think I had to put him out or something. And I I mean I came in and I I, I absolutely gave it to him. I was they said. <laughs> Did you give it to him? I gave it to him. They said, you can be as big as you want to be. And I thought, oh, my God, I can use my stage stuff, right? Right, (laughs) right. And and so so that one scene, was. they were so impressed with that one scene that, uh, oh, a month or so later, they decided to give uh, Fred Sanford a a, a girlfriend. Uh, And uh, I, I among, um, oh, I don't know, a hundred other actresses in Hollywood uh, auditioned, and we had screen tests, and... um, uh, I think I think he liked me uh, because well, I'm sure he did because otherwise I wouldn't have I wouldn't have gotten the part. Uh, but but he was impressed with 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 my with with I think with my experience. He, he, he was and, and and I think he he always said you're so dignified and and and, and I, I need somebody dignified opposite me. He was aware of his oh. about his what his earth his earthiness shall we say? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And uh, and so I and that and that is how I was cast. And interestingly enough, at the same time, I was doing a, a television sh- series called The Walton. Yes, and, I was uh, just about to ask that. Yeah. Uh huh. I I was doing Miss Verdi, honey. Miss Verdi. Miss Verdi. Woo! That was a that I was that was one of the oh one of the roles that I'm I'm, I'm most proud of because she proved. Uh, that that you can you can improve yourself at any time in your life. It, mm-hmm. When we first when we first see her, she, as far as people are concerned, she's a, she, she's an, a successful, accomplished wife and mother, mm-hmm. and had a good job and was well respected. But she couldn't read. Right. She right. couldn't read. And um, of course, and, and of course, she, she, John Boy taught her how to read. And uh, they again were they were impressed with my work. And and I and I was on the show for the ten years that it was on, as you know. And yes. And of she it, it opened up a whole new world for her after she learned to read, and mm-hmm. she, she was a voracious reader at that point, and, and it ended up with the family, and and my husband was played by Hal Williams, who was also in family. Yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, Smitty. Mm-hmm. Uh, exactly, mm-hmm. and that that's uh, basically how how that came about. Wow. Uh, but Red but it but Red Fox <laughs> oh my darling, it was an experience working with him because he he he's a nightclub performer. And actually he grew <laughs> up uh he, he grew up on the streets. He he didn't uh, he he didn't have um like a, a regular home life as some of us had. So so he you know he came from from from, from that um from, from that sphere of, of society. And he it was undisciplined. So we had to we had to all take that in, in into consideration, he as an example. If he didn't feel like working, he would entertain us all day. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The, the show. What what would happen? Uh, the, the the schedule is that you'd, you'd report uh, for a, a table reading on say Monday, and you need to read read the script two or three times uh, and and make any uh, any changes or, or whatever needed to be done mm-hmm. on Tuesday. On Tuesday you would you would you would you're supposed to do a run through, and on Wednesday you'd continue to do a run through. Thursday would be a dress rehearsal. Friday would we take the show. Well, those first three days we got no work done at all because Red was, if he didn't feel if he didn't feel up to but he would entertain us, and then there was no way that you could break that. We had to just sit there and laugh. But then, and because he, he, he oh, I, he, after the show, Red would go to, go to Las Vegas and and do his nightclub act. Oh wow! So sometimes when he came in on Monday morning, he hadn't had any sleep. So it was a real, real challenge to be able to 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 to, to, to remain. Um, it was, uh, you know, to get my work done because my, yes. work, my work was with him. He didn't, he didn't like to. He was not disciplined. He was not a disciplined actor. But when he got, when that camera hit him, you watch out. <laughs> exactly. Well, so you know what? And that was that was one of my questions, because as an actor, you know, uh, I kind of, and, and then I'm also a director, so I kind of, I can feel like when something that went off script or whatever, and everybody's moving around it, or, mm-hmm. or, or, or something, you know, a twist doesn't come in, and yeah. and you can see everybody's facial expression, they're trying to hold yeah. back a laugh and not break yeah. character. Oh my God, yes, <laughs> baby. 
<laughs> oh, it was a challenge. It was it was a definite challenge. But I think I learned more about um, about acting and, and and about staying you know staying in the scene and saying mm-hmm. th- th- than I could have learned in school. Uh, he he was and and but th- then of course he would feel badly about the fact that we um, that he had not that we had didn't get the proper rehearsal because he would he, he sometimes he he didn't know the lines that he would ad lib and what he would say would be. Better than the, the, the script, the, the, the script of course. <laughs> but as far as we are concerned, we we're just on pins and needles. Right. Really and then if when he when this happened, he would feel badly about it. And the next day, he'd come in and he'd bring us all gifts. Oh wow! Oh, wow, that was gracious. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, that was very did. gracious. Okay. Yes, yes. He 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 was he was who he was, and and uh, he he ma- and he made no apologies for it, except that uh, he did feel feel badly for the other people sometimes. Mm-hmm. I've got got uh, oh I. I I think I've I've got jewelry and I've got a, 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 a jacket, a mink jacket that he gave oh, me. Wow. I, I don't know what all, but he he was he was the one of a kind. Okay, exactly, exactly. Now you know that I I I I have to ask this particular question because someone asked this at my job and they were, they were very very serious. Why did not? Uh, Red of uh, Fred Sanford and Donna Harris ever get married. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I think because then you it, you would have you would have lost you would have lost the conflict uh, of 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 their uh, of of their the, the storyline uh, with, with if she moved into the house. As mm-hmm. example, mm-hmm. It, would, it, it it would have become kind of domesticated, I think. And then what would have happened to Lamont? And it, I think it would have posed m- more problems that mm-hmm. were not that would not would not be funny. Right. That would not be funny. And we had to always remember that this is that, that this is a comedy. A comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And mm-hmm. so we had to. We, he had to. He had to have the house free so that he could bring his buddies in and, and, and do all the things that he did on his own, which he could not do if he was. If he had a wife, exactly. If, especially to Donna with Donna, yes. So. Oh yeah, especially with Donna because she wasn't having all that nonsense, honey. No, she she was Miss Pris, you know. Yes. Oh, very very sophisticated. <laughs> and what I loved about it was the fact that, you know, uh, and though uh, uh, the character Fred, Fred Sanford was a junk man, he was still an entrepreneur. Yeah, yes, he was. And that was something that I think that a lot of the audience missed, that he was his own businessman. He and was. to know that the type of women he was attracted to, uh, you know, Donna was a nurse, so, you know, she was a professional herself. Yes, and those yes. were some of the messages that I loved about the show that I think a lot of folks missed. I think you know? you're right. He, he did indeed have his – he and his son had their own business, and they, and they, and they had – you know, they had their own, their own home, you know, and, and they, they were, you know, they were self-sufficient. And, and yes. you say she, she was a professional woman. Those are, those are positive uh, things about the show that, um, that people sometimes miss uh, because – they're, they're concerned with the, with the comedy aspect of it, mm-hmm. but, but those mm-hmm. are, there were other dimensions as well. Uh, exactly. Now let me ask this because um, we knew uh, of of the the fondness that uh, Mr. Fox and Delarie shared, yeah. and at his passing, you know, we heard. Um, and everyone went to Della and, and, and you know, very, very, uh, they catered to her and, and, and cradled her and, and embraced her because of the loss. But we didn't hear from the cast. And what was that for you? Being that you played his on-screen girlfriend, you guys had all this closeness on the, on the, on the set. What was that like for you at his passing? It was it it, it 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 was definitely a loss, and I I took a, a moment, uh, maybe uh, whatever time I needed to uh, to you know to to ask God to 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 to, to take him, and 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 I, I, my feeling is that that once we leave this sphere as we know it, that we, I believe that we go to a better place. Mm-hmm, I, I mm-hmm. do, and I I I I prayed for his passing, his his easy passing, and uh, but uh, I we hadn't I hadn't seen him in years. Uh, after because he red lived red lived in Las Vegas. Mm. He never he he, uh, he had a home here, but after his marriage broke up, I I'm not certain if he spent much time here, especially after the show. Um, 
closed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and he, he 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 was in Las Vegas. Uh, and unfortunately, he was a terrible businessman because he treated his he treated his money the way he treated the show. You know, uh, right. I mean, he, he just he just didn't take it seriously right. because because he you know he didn't he hated rehearsing as an example. But then he would get out there and, he, and, and whatever he said, we had to be able to to follow him because it was going to be right. It was going to be good. And I think his finances had gotten had reached a certain point. With the, he, he had these terrible uh, problems with the income tax people. I hear. Mm. Yeah. And it, uh, I, but I, I didn't. I did not. I was not in touch with him uh, after the show pa- closed. Mm. Um, so I, you know, as I said, when, when I heard that he had passed away, I, I said a prayer for him. Okay. All right. Uh-huh. Oh, now see, we could talk about this particular. I have to go here. I have to go here because I'm told that this was your sister, and that is Miss LaWanda Page. <laughs> Okay, I am told oh. that y'all were just sister friends, honey. We, uh, she, uh, I, she, she, she just now. Now she and Red were from the same, uh, the, the same. Yes. Place. I mean, in so far as comedy was mm-hmm. concerned, right? Mm-hmm. They were both from the street, and they both, uh, you, you know, they and and. But she, she, she absolutely adored me, and 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 I, she, I did. Uh, we we were very very close and she and at one point we were we were talking and she said you know you I just you know, I I love you so I, I think you know I feel like you're my sister and from that point on she would introduce me as her sister and lo and behold I looked on the internet or somewhere and it said LaWanda Page one sister <laughs> oh I my had, I had <laughs> I had no idea that she had gone to that point, but she and I were close right right, right to the end because she lived here in Los Angeles, and mm-hmm. I knew her daughter and uh and but that's how that came about. She just adopted me all right all right. <laughs> That's a sister. That was a spunky sister, honey. Yes, she was. She and Red were equal. They were. Equal yes, in, they in, were. In, in every way, in every way. That it, oh, oh, I must tell you how she got the part. Uh, we Red was a, a very uh, kind and generous person. I mean, he'd, he'd, give, he'd give you the, the you know the clothes off his back if anybody needed anything. He, you know, he's the one that they could come to, and he would help them. And he brought all of his friends in, as you probably know, all yes. those, those all those comics and all mm-hmm. those people, people that he'd worked with. And he didn't care whether they could act or not. You know, he, 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 he <laughs> right. He, he, he got the gig. To, come on, right. <laughs> he, he, they, they were going to be on his show. There was nothing those white folks could do about it but let it happen. Right. Know? But uh, um, what was I, you were asking me about about Lawanda? Were you not? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. And and oh, she 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 was a, a comedian uh, for many many years, and I had I had never heard of her at, at, at this one point in time. She was appearing at a club, and I may have seen the name Lawanda Page, you know, as, as appearing at that 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 and so club. Mm-hmm. Well, this, this, I, I noticed that Mr. Mr. Red Fox and and and, and four, four of the producers were having this intense argument. I mean, they were. I you know, I said, oh, let me just get out of here, which is what I I, I don't I don't, know, don't know what's going on. I don't want to be a part of it. this shit. But lo and behold, they called me over. Red, Lynn, Lynn, come over, come over here, Lynn. Please, I need your help. I came over. He said, you know, you know, I'm trying. To tell these people that they're gonna, you know, they're gonna give me a sister-in-law, and I mean, I'm trying to tell them I know, I know the exact woman who can do this part, and, and, and you, know, you know, Lawana. Tell these people that Lawana Page can do this part. Tell her. I, 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 well, I did I, I had never heard of Lawana Page. I didn't know what to say, so I said, you know, I, I she's appearing at, at this <coughs> wonderful club. Uh, uh, and, and I remember the name of the club, and I was uh-huh, online, uh-huh. you know, t- talking about. It, and I said, the audience, I hear the audiences are standing in line to see her, and and she she's a very fine comedian. And and I, I said everything, but I couldn't vouch for the lady. I mean, you know, I because I didn't know her, but I had to. I had, so I was straddling that fence. <laughs> But oh, I guess I, I guess I said enough favorable things for her that they gave her a chance, and she came down, and of course she tore the place up, as you right. know. Right? Yes, the, Lord. And, and from that point on, it, uh, it, the rest, as they say, is it's it's history. history. Mm-hmm. But uh, he really put me on the spot. But I'm, I'm glad that I that I said whatever it is. Whatever it was, <laughs> praise the Lord, honey. Okay, <laughs> gonna put me in your mess, child. My, I'm all the way over here. Okay. <laughs> now listen. See, you've worked with some names now, darling. Now you know Ross, honey, Miss Ross, Diana. 
is yes. is the Degaga baby. What was that like working on the set of Ladies Sing the Ladies Blues. Sing the Blues, honey, Miss yes. Auntie Eleonora, Eleonora. Yes. Yes, yes, it's Miss Billy Holiday, Miss Billy Holiday. Yes. Uh, I, that, I, now, you, you must understand that uh, I only had the one scene. That, I mean, I, it was, you know, but I quote that line. I, I quote that scene, honey, because that, that there was, I think, it was very funny for me because it, it was something to see that back in that day, you know, though we, we were about family, but we were also very independent family. You know, you, this mm-hmm. was just my my niece, honey. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I would take you with you, but, um, you know, well, there's a letter in there from your mama. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But she was, as I recall, she was nervous, and 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 and, and rightly so. And um, I we we had. Be, I only I only had I, I only worked one day and we were we were in the makeup chair and of course I came in and I, and I introduced myself and and afterwards we were sitting waiting you know and I said to her you know you know she's oh I don't know how I'm gonna do this I mean I you know I, I don't even feel like I'm however the child was young I think at that I think the, the scene had her being a uh, very young this was before she she I think uh, I, as I recall she was. Um, Oh, whatever the scene was, she said, "I don't know if I can do it." She was she was insecure about it. Is the mm-hmm. point I'm trying mm-hmm. to make. And I said to her, "You know, you have a, 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 a wonderful talent, and, and I have I have seen I have seen your work, uh, and you are going to be just fine. You know, all you need to do is get out there. Don't think ahead. Just stay right in the moment." Stay right in the moment. I mm-hmm. said, and look at me. Whenever you, whenever you're feeling, uh, you know, we're having some doubt, just look at me, and I will give you a look that's going to that that will help you get back into the scene. And, uh, right. And uh, and and we, and we we she 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 obviously paid attention because the scene. Well, I think we we did that scene in maybe three or four takes. Wow. Mm-hmm. And really? I, as, I, as I recall, it seems to me that I smacked her butt or something, and she got into a car. Oh, that was a long time ago. Child, you're taking me so far back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Let me keep that train going, honey, because I have to go here, my darling. I have to go here because you were the matriarch of the first African-American-centered daytime drama Generations. Oh, yes. My yes. darling. First, let me just say thank you for for being a part of that because when that show aired, I know for that little half hour, honey, everything, the world stopped for me and several others. I'm going to holler out somebody in the in the tea room over here, Michi Duvall, because he's in, all in my head, honey. He's he working with me, uh, asking me, saying, you know, all this about about generations and about uh, Ain't Ida from uh, from Lady Sings the Blues. Michi, I, I got you, baby. Um, <laughs> What's his name? Michi Duvall. Uh, Duvall, Michi I'm Duvall. sorry. Michi Duvall. Uh-huh. Uh, is, is he listening? Yes, yes. Hello there, and I consider you my new friend. It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's a pleasure to say hello to you, and I'm glad you're listening this morning. All right, all right. Lynn is precious and put a heart sign up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were all so excited about the, the prospect of the first African American soap opera. We were I, all, and I, everybody had had good wishes for us, and and it was it was a, a wonderful experience to be a trailblazer in that department, and 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 playing Miss Vivian Potter, I, I, it was it was a highlight, an absolute highlight of my career. Uh, unfortunately, um, soap operas, uh, e- 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 any 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 soap opera has uh, lots of competition. Right. And and uh, I. I I always, and I said this to NBC. Uh, I said I, I, I realize I'm out of line, and, and, and that I have I have no business uh, expressing my opinion, but I need to. When they told me that they were going to put us on at 11:30, now there's a show called The Young and the, Young the Restless, and the Restless huh? that has been on, had been on for years, and I think is still on. Yes. It came. It's a it's an hour show. It came on at 11 o'clock, from 11 to 12. Now. Nobody is. I said you're going to put a put a new show on uh, from 11 to 11:30. Those young and the rest of the people are not going to t- going to number one uh, watch our show 
for a half an hour and miss the young and the restless. Either put us on before or after. But but that was I I still maintain that it, that it was the time factor that um, that that uh, made mm-hmm. the show uh, less watched uh, and, uh, and and we, and and we didn't make it. We we simply didn't oh. make it. I, it was it was so chugging. I, when, when we got to the first 100 episodes, I said, "Okay, okay," you know. And I, I and and the writing, oh my God, the writing was exquisite. We didn't have long, drawn out, you know, uh, situations. It it, it 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 was very true to our culture. It, it was. was very oh my God. It was an absolute fabulous show. Okay, when we had other other uh, African American actors leaving, uh, 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 Christoph St. John when he left the Young and the Restless to come over yes, to Generations, yes, yes, Debbie Morgan had left all my children yes, to come to yes, Generations, honey, yes, and I right. said, oh wow, you know, yes, yes, oh I did. was living for that. I said, okay, you know, I, I, I was very excited for the show. Yes. And, you know, yes. it kicked off. It, a lot of folks don't realize Vivica Fox is, you know, she got her start there. She got her start. That was yes, the first ma'am. Show that she, the first show that she ever did. Was yes, the, ma'am. Was she got her start right there yes, with Generations, indeed. honey. Yes, indeed. Yes, um, indeed. But oh. I just feel that I, it, the numbers, honey, it, it, the, the numbers are a very important. Those Nielsen numbers. Mm. And mm. we were, mm. and, and, and we were, I mean, I think there are, there were maybe at that point that maybe 100, 100 shows uh, uh, I think there must be more than that now. But every every week when those numbers come out, uh, the Young and the Restless was number seven or eight, and our show was like fifty six. Okay. 56. You know, you see where I'm going with that. Yeah. Uh, it, it it just and and I don't so remember we didn't have TiVo and and um, <laughs> right and, 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 and you know so that people could could tape it or something. But I, I, my feeling is that had we been on. Uh, either uh, from 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 ten to ten thirty, or from three until three thirty in the afternoon. Any time, opposite almost anybody except the young and the restless. That okay. Was the, the, the leading daytime soap opera then and still is. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But that that's my feeling. Uh, that that and, and and NBC of course was looking at the what they call the, the Nielsen ratings, and we never we, we never got out of the bottom fifty. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my it was, God! It was it was a it was a oh it was it was so hurtful. It was, and it was and you know what what is still hurtful for me is that we have a whole soap opera soap net now, and I've I've caught all the old all the old uh, uh, episodes of Dynasty and and Falcon Crest and all the older uh, prime time and and some of the older. Uh, daytime drama. They were they were starting to to play recaps of some of the older stuff, and mm-hmm. not once have they come through yet. And no, we post generations, I, I, and I'm so right. outdone for that. I'm so outdone for that. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely you right. Know. They haven't. Mm-mm. It's as though they. It's as though NBC just just buried it. I don't know what happened to it. And and it's going to take folks like me who got a mouth because we could catch <laughs> it on YouTube because I have missed the infamous fight. Scene, honey, and that, that's all we talked about was when Doreen and Miss Thing and Vivica, I can't think of Vivica's character's name right now, when they had to fight, honey, and Miss Thing pulled that dress up and wrapped it around her. I said, all right, children. Let's, let's get it on. Yes, and I have missed it, and, of course, that was the talk for, like, it's still the talk for years. And I happened to look on YouTube, and I caught that fight from start to finish. I said, oh, my God. And I lived it just as if it was happening, you know, um, currently. So, oh, yes. Yes. oh yes. you know, I, yes. I, I, I miss, I just missed that show. And I, and I was hoping, so well, hoping do. that it was going to take off. Uh, Torian Black, he had the, yes. when he came from Hill Street Blues to play the, 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 the father yes. of the, oh, it was what a cast. Joan Pringle. Oh yes, Joan Trinko. Yes, it was an excellent. Oh, okay. It was, it, it, it was the cream of the crop. The yes. storyline. Yes. We had everything going for us. Everything in terms of it being entertaining. Yes. But, but uh, my, my darling, the, the, I, I, but the the audience, uh, the audience was split. They was and, and and there's nobody more loyal than soap opera fans. That's right. That's they, right. They, 
Yeah. That's they, right, because, you know, when they took that off the air, I kind of boycotted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't go back did. to all my children or anything for a little minute because I was devastated. I, I couldn't do anything for a little I minute. Have, mm-hmm. I, I, too. I, too. We all yeah. were. We all were. It, 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 was, it was just such a, such a tragedy. I, I really think it was a tragedy because it, it, mm-hmm. it, it had so much uh, to offer. And and uh, it was such a fine show. So much to offer and has not been duplicated yet. Not, no, no. Isn't that no. amazing? It has not been duplicated yet. You, you know, I hadn't thought of that, my dear, but they, 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 we still don't have a, 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 a black a, a soap opera. So we, we? we sure don't. Mm-mm. No, we don't. Uh-huh. Not at all. And <laughs> that is going to, um, okay, these children in the chat room, honey, they are living for you, Miss Lynn. Okay, <laughs> Michi says, Michi DeVell, he says, she, and I was going here, she's done an episode of Cold Case. That's my favorite show. I said, yes, yeah, she did that this year. Yeah, uh, I... <laughs> Lisa V says she also was on Gunsmoke. She played a nun on Gunsmoke, honey. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> God, yes, I did. I loved doing that. And at that time, I, I, I remember it, at that time, Gunsmoke had been on for like 15 years, and they hadn't done anything using black actors at all, not at all. Mm. And the first, the, the, I, I, the, I, I was on it, at, which was the first time they had they had done a, a, a used used a, a black cast with mm-hmm. uh, Rex Ingram. I don't know uh, people maybe not, do not remember Rex Ingram, but he was uh, he was uh, he played the Lord, the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, and he they they did a, a, a wrote a story just for him on Gunsmoke, and it was about uh, uh, black people traveling, uh, mm-hmm. going 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 cross country. God, I and remember I, that. I remember that, and I got, I had a, I had a small part in, in 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 that show. So that when they decided they want to do the show called The Ladies of Providence, they called me back down again, and of course I had to I had to I think I auditioned and screen tested for maybe five or six times, and they had everybody in the world, every every every. every African American star in the world right. for, for <laughs> that lady, but uh, I was so I was privileged to have to have gotten that part on on Gunsmoke and um, and that was with um, uh, an actress named Susan Batson and uh, uh, oh dear for God forgive me I have forgotten the other girl's name, uh, but anyway uh, yes that was Gunsmoke <laughs> I was I was thrilled I was absolutely thrilled because it was. It was a wonderful role. The, 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 those, three, those three nuns were wonderful, and and that oh, what was his name? I remember some um, the, the man has a, has a, a, a bad eye, but he was so scary. <laughs> and, he was, he was, and he actually had this gun, a real gun, my dear. Okay. <laughs> oh, you you are taking me way back, my darling. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Well, honey, did that's the love that we have? I tell you, baby. You know when I when we talk about you and yo, that's why you are one of our pioneers and our trailblazers, honey. Because you have gone to places, you know, you've had a career that I'm dreaming for, you know. But without you, there could be no me because you've done these things and have laid groundwork to say it's okay for me to come through, you know. Thank you, my darling. Oh, thank you, my darling, honey. I can, I, hey, with, with, this is the circle of life. Now, I have to go here because you played a, a, a nice, nice, bitchy little character, honey, on 227. <laughs> Miss Emma Johnson, honey. Oh, Miss yeah. Emma Johnson. <laughs> Miss yeah. Emma Johnson. I, I, I love doing that part. I, I was going to. She I, was kind of bitchy. She was kind oh. of bitchy. And my friend Mala, my friend Mala Gibbs, uh, uh, whom I see often, and and uh, she's a, she's a you you must interview her sometimes too if if you if you've that, 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 that I got that in the works, honey. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I did. It was because well, I, I it, it was it was a change for me. It was a different different uh, acting uh, experience, and I loved it. I oh, loved it, you it. look like it. I'm telling you, <laughs> darling. Wait a minute. It was the way you used to call her name when it was that look that you would give. <laughs> I have that just just embedded in my memory banks, honey. Oh my God! Whenever Miss Emma knew she had something, oh really, Mary. And that little look that you would give, and that little half a smile, that little evil grin, I said, yeah, "Oh, this yeah. thing is really going to take me through changes." Oh, oh 
I don't get a chance to play bitches much. Yet. <laughs> People are always casting me as some kind of lady, you know. And I, but it's wonderful. I need to. I need to tell you one of the experiences of my life was I was working in the Jesse Owens story. Oh yes. Uh, I, I played his mom. Yes. Jesse Owens. Dorian Harwood uh, played played Jesse Owens. But but the point I'm making is that when I was a uh, a young model in in uh, Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was uh, very very uh, fortunate to to work as a in, in a in a in a store in a showroom downtown in, in Chicago before I went to New York and uh, Jesse Owens was um, a goodwill ambassador at that time and he came to the store on this one occasion and I had the opportunity to meet him and to speak with him and and to chat with him I've got a picture of, of us on our wall on my wall and wow. experiences of my life what a gentle. Uh, Gentle uh, man, mm-hmm. um, he, he had he, his, his, he had a good soul. You, you, you know, you could tell it. You mm-hmm. tell he had mm-hmm. a good soul. And just just having a, a few minutes with him was like one of the one of the absolute joys of my life. Uh, oh wow, that's yeah. fabulous. And I, I must tell you that I just finished uh, a, a movie. Um, I um I had some health problems, but I'm I'm and I so I retired about four four years ago. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe five years ago, but I'm I'm fine now, and I'm but and I, and I'm back. As a matter of fact, Cold, ah. Cold, Cold Case was the first show that I did since I since my illness. Um, but I, I've just finished making a movie that that I'd, I'd like to ask your li- listening audience to look out for. It's called Aftermath. Okay. And uh, it's a Jerry Boyd film. It's an independent film. Uh, and um. It's about it shows what what we can do the strength uh, that 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 we have as human beings. If if something hits you hard, you you, you can't just lay there and die. You, I mean, you can't just let it happen. You have to fight back. You have to and fight. If, That's right. And if you fight back, God will help you. He will help you. And this the, the aftermath is about. Everything that could happen to a young man happened to this young man, mm-hmm. and um, and and he and he he not only prevailed but he overcame the whole thing. So it's a wonderful movie. It's called oh, well, Aftermath. Aftermath. And, uh, Aftermath. So look for it. Okay. Yeah, we sure will. Okay, y'all heard that right here. That's the exclusive. I love when I get exclusives, honey. That just tingles me. That tingles me. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yes, I have a yes, caller yes. that wants to come in and uh, ask a question. Okay. Okay. We're going to go right here. 323 uh, 243. 323 243. Hello there, my darling. You're dishing tea with Big Meat. Hey. Caller. Yeah, yes. Hello. Hey. You're there. We got you. Hey. 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 Listen, there, there is no greater reward in life than to know Lynn Hamilton. Oh my God! I recognize, I recognize that. I recognize that voice, and 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 he's my best friend, and and he's my mentor, and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be who I am without him. Oh wow! What an honor! Oh hello, I there, call Calvin. you my God. I, I call <laughs> you my God, angel, and and everything that I have in my life over the fifteen years has been because of you, and and it is a, a golden privilege. It is an honor. For me just to sit back and hear an interview that I've enjoyed. Demetrius, you've done a wonderful job, guy. I, I, oh, I'm very thank proud you, of baby. you. Thank you, baby. Very proud of you. Very proud. So go ahead. You have like seven minutes left, and, and Lynn, I just want you to know I need some polygrains, baby. I need some polygrains. Tell Frank to get my polygrains. All right, all right, my dear. I will, Carson. You've got it. I love you. All right. All right. Well, thank you for thanks, Carson, baby. (laughs) Oh, and thank and thank you, really. No, thank you, honey. Thank you. Thank you. What a joy! What a surprise! You know. I um I I'm really I told you I was born in Mississippi I'm really I'm really uh, a country girl at heart and, and, and uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I love I'm, it I'm, and, and so is my husband who is who who is a writer a very fine writer you'll be seeing his work soon but we have a we have an organic garden and we grow oh. all of our vegetables year round so he was Carson was calling about collard greens uh-huh, uh-huh. collard greens collard greens mustard mustard greens you know string beans whatever you whatever you you can oh well of. okay do I need to catch the fly. Well, I, 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 you know, you give me, you give me your, your address after, uh, after uh, 
after the show. And, yes. uh, and maybe, I don't know, if, if maybe there's some way I can send you some. Because sometimes I go down the street asking neighbors, do you want some of this? Do you want tomatoes? Mm-hmm. Do you oh, want my God. Because you can't eat them all. <laughs> Darling, there is nothing like a... A fresh tomato pick from the vine. Honey, they, you know, oh. the, the tomatoes are sweet. It's from the garden there. But if you buy them in the store, they have no taste They have at all. no taste. Exactly. I know. Oh, my God. I got it. I fell in love with beefsteak and big boy tomatoes. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Oh, yes. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Okay. Johnson, bless his heart. He called on the radio to ask me to give him some collard greens. Some collard greens, honey. Okay. <laughs> you get, okay, now that's real tea right there, honey. That's I, real I, tea. I, it is. It is. Indeed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, let me ask you this. Because, you know, I, I am sitting over here and I am swooning, honey, because your your eloquence with your speaking is just, it's, le- it's really letting me have it, honey. I'm telling you. Oh. Okay, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm loving it so. And I, I want to get your take on the industry today. You know, with, uh, we, we don't hear the type of training that you that was afforded your generation of coming into the business um what do you think could could possibly improve if anything or uh or could be different i let's just do that what could be different about uh uh acting and and television and film and stage work now um that could better it from your generation look at looking at it now I think we have more. Uh, we ha- we have excellent opportunities now. We do. We, 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 the song says we've come a long way, baby. The baby, okay. We have. The, the, the thing that 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 irks me most is that the the, the young people do not seem to feel that they need to 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 to, 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 to have training to go to school and it's a craft. Acting, real acting, is a craft. You can't just get up there and do it. You you, you know you you there's a technique to it. I was a, I was in drama school for. Four years, and after that, I worked in workshops and in little theater groups and the like. But what 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 bugs me the most is that, that I can't understand them half the time. They they do not they they, they do not. I, I mean, I, I I like to say I need to hear your T's, D's, and I N G's. Okay. And, and I, you know, and, right. and, and 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 when and when I don't, I think that you are being uh, that you are being dishonest and unfair to your craft. You are you are people are paying to see you. They need to hear you. Yes. They, they need to hear you, then they need to understand what you are saying. And then, because if they can't understand what you're saying, it doesn't much matter what else is going on inside. Exactly. If we can. But that's, that's my big pet peeve. But I do believe now that I would encourage I would encourage anybody who wanted to become an actor, a television a stage actor, a movie actor, this, if, if this is your desire... Get the proper training first and foremost, and go for it. Because I think that 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 African Americans can go straight to the top now. The opportunities are there. We have producers. We have we have African American producers and, and African American writers and, and 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 heads of studios. Yes, you know, yes. The opportunities are there, but you have but you cannot. But the audience. Oh, Oh, I, I, oh God! I, I started. To, you, you know, you can't, you cannot fool the audience, and that's not what I wanted to say. You know what I wanted to say, right? <laughs> so, oh, no, you could have, you could have ripped it, honey, because I will. Okay, <laughs> you could have ripped it, sugar. <laughs> I would, I would encourage anybody who, who, who feel that this is what they would like to do. There's nothing, there's nothing quite as as rewarding as being able to, 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 to do a job and have someone come back and say, I, be, I, I, I believed everything you said. You know, you made me laugh. You made me cry. You made me forget, you know, whatever uh, problems I might have had, but, you know, just for the, the time that mm-hmm, I was watching mm-hmm. you. That, that, I think that that is very important. We need that we as as human beings need diversion, and I think that that people in theater, uh, uh, actors. Oh, ninety seconds. I but know that it didn't went so quickly. It did. It I'm did. going to say right now because um I had a, I got another caller, and I'm going to say thank you right now because within the next few seconds, those of you listening by computer, the stream is going to stop. However, I'm going to take this last call. 
Uh, and you can catch all of this in the archives because everything is going to archive because I want to make sure that the fans, uh, the, that the fans will come on through and show their appreciation and their adornment. But I have to say thank you so much because this has been such a joy for me. I'm telling you, I'm so tingly right now. It is ridiculous. It, I need to do a commercial for whatever that – what was the, the little stuff that make you tingly all inside? I, whatever it was, I need to do that commercial because I'm feeling just that way right now. And it was a, it was a, it was my pleasure. The, the 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 hour went by so quickly. You are so easy to speak to speak to. And speaking of speaking, you speak beautifully. Oh, bless your heart! You do, you do, and I'm. I, it, it, it's 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 a joy, just an absolute joy talking with you. Oh my God! Oh, oh. <laughs> maybe we'll do it again sometime. Okay. Maybe, oh, maybe, I know maybe. we will. I know we will. I know especially, we will. I know after- it. I know we will, honey. That there, I'm putting that in the atmosphere because I'm coming to get a play the greens, honey. I'm getting the plane ticket. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to go here because this, this particular caller is calling from uh, 313-772. 313-772. Hello there, my darling. You're on the air with Dishing Tea with Big Meat. Hi. Hello. Hey! Hey! I am lifted. I am lifted. Miss Lynn, I love you so much. My name is Carline Dixon, and I have brought you you my Carline Dixon. Carline Dixon, hello there. Hello. I love you. This hour has been wonderful. Oh, I'm it's been my lifted. pleasure. I am lifted. I am an actress and Big Meech's best friend in the world, and we have been <laughs> traveling this road here together, and you are truly an inspiration to an actress such as myself. Well, my darling, if you want it, you can get it. You can get it. You can. You 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 just stick to stick to to, to to what you believe in. Stick to what you feel, and, and and always be honest. You you will you will be successful. I get a wonderful energy from you. So good luck to you. Thank you so much. And I know Big Meech is going to give you my web address. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I That's am working fun. my craft. I am working my craft, and I am. The uh, head videographer and actress director of ShowtownTV.com. Well, my word! Well, congratulations. That's very impressive. Thank you. I'm trying my very best, and I have so been all- this hour from you and me. Uh, oh my God! Well, I'm glad you are inspired, my sister. Oh, so am I. How nice. How nice. That's wonderful. Oh, oh I just, my. Oh. That's such a joy. That is such a joy. That I'll is such a joy. Too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you ever come to Cal- Los Angeles, look me up. Yes, ma'am. I okay. will. <laughs> She'll be with me <laughs> more than likely. <laughs> All right. All right. And remember, you can do anything that you really want to do. Anything you really want to do, put God in front of you, and you can do it. All right now. Yes, All ma'am. right now, that there, that's gospel right there. Oh, yes. All right. Well, I, well I thank you, so. my darling, thank for calling you. and for listening, honey. I'm glad you're inspired. And that there, see, I've done my job then, honey, because that's what this is all about. You did. You have done your job. Okay. You have done, you have done very well. It's been my exquisite pleasure. Oh, okay. See, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you floor me, honey. I love it. I love it. Oh, because I miss those days of 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 real language and vocabulary and and you know we we we've gotten so used to four letter words and yes, and, and yes. everything to yes. oh, excuse me to where we forgot the beauty and the sound of words. I love exquisite. You know, and, I, and, 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 and just how, how, 
you know, we there was a way my mother taught me that you could call somebody a name, honey, without calling them that name if you know how to talk right. Yes, and you can. I said, okay. And you can I, make your point. You can make your point without being vulgar. Without being vulgar. I, okay, that's gonna be my Facebook. Quote. But 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 if you have to be vulgar, then be vulgar. Okay, sometimes it's required. Now it is. Some, <laughs> sometimes it's necessary. Yes, <laughs> it's a necessary evil from time yes, to time. Yes. However. Yes, yes. But 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 that doesn't have to be the 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 primary choice, you know. No, I call that you know we're supposed to save that for emergencies, honey. Okay, now you're gonna make me go up my bag in a minute. I'm trying to keep my little religion, honey. Okay, I'm trying to be cute, but you're gonna make me go in my bag. Okay, exactly. exactly. Don't push too far. Now. Okay, don't push the button. Not the red one, honey. The red one, not the red one. Okay. <laughs> I totally agree. I totally agree, my darling. Oh, Miss Hamilton, I I wish you just uh, just eternal health, eternal happiness. You know, you, you're married, honey. You have your daughter. You have a wonderful family. You have wonderful friends around you. You have God that is leading and guiding your footsteps and constantly giving you direction and letting his Holy Spirit just rest, rule, and abide with you. And I just thank you so much for taking just this little time to bless me so that I, too, can be. I told you I was feeling groggy earlier, honey, but my muse has kicked. And, baby, I'm about ready to do high kicks all through my apartment. I'm <laughs> delighted. I am absolutely. And everything you've just said, right back at you. Oh, I, I receive it. I receive it all. Oh, yes, and, and we'll speak again. Perhaps. Yes, we will. Thank you so much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the incredible, the pioneering and the trailblazing, Miss Lynn Hamilton. Thank you for your time, sugar. Thank you again. Mm-hmm. We'll talk Bye-bye. soon. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Yes. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time, for dishing your tea with me. And just, just, just dishing tea, honey. Lynn just laid that out so beautifully and so eloquently. And um, I'm sitting over here just like a little schoolgirl, honey, because I'm telling you with this little tingling, honey, she just, she's just so, so pristine. You know, just so fishy. I can't stand it, honey. I can't stand it. And I love it. I, I tell, I'm just seeing her with with a big old hat and some gloves and a purse. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? Miss Michi and Carrie and all, all of y'all in, in the tea room over there. You know what I'm talking about, honey? The days of old, baby, with your high heels on and your and your furs and things and your gloves, going to the church house and things. Just very sophisticated lady all day. My mother used to do that all the time, honey. And I just get such a kick. And I just thank her for just evoking that spirit and just being herself. So um, I thank you so much for your time, honey. Next week's show, I want you guys to be here because I have a treat. For those of you uh, who saw the Facebook pictures of the, the, the black gay couple that got married with all the hair and, and the, the big, big, big uh, um, um, tuxedos, you know, the Victorian-style tuxedos, folks are going to talk to uh, was teasing them, thinking they were vampires and this, that, and the other. Well, they are the Cole Smiths. Michael Cole Smith and uh, Jamil Smith Cole will be on next week. We're going to talk about those photos. We're going to talk about their wedding. We're going to talk about the controversy that was not supposed to happen. It just did in Cyberland. We got two folks fired from, from Morehouse College based on their comments on the photos and things of that nature. So these two children have become the, the, the unofficial spokeschildren or poster children for black gay weddings and marriages. So we're going to talk to the Cole Smiths next week, and I encourage you to come on out and to be a part of that discussion because it's going to be fantabulous, okay? So uh, with that, I uh, – oh, and then the week after, ha, 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 that's uh, – next week is December 16th, December 23rd, two days before Christmas, honey. The one and only Christopher Williams will bless, will bless us with his presence here on Dishing Tea. Yes, Mr. Fine and Fabulous himself. He has new music, and hopefully we get to debut it for you here. And uh, we're going to move forward. Coming after the new year, 
my diva, honey, Miss Stephanie Mills is coming. We just got to we got to get through her uh, her holiday schedule, and when we set that date, honey, trust me, honey, you will know because y'all gonna hear it from here over to in uh, Timbuktu and carrying on because that is my diva right there. So those are some of the highlights that are coming up for Dishing Tea, honey. I thank you. Thank you to all my sponsors once again for your time and consideration and for your love and what it is that Dishing Tea is all about. So until we meet again, my darlings, oh, let me apologize for last week. I forgot to say that earlier in the show. Last week, uh, we had to cancel the show because here in Atlanta, we had a power outage over here where I'm over by the airport and my entire apartment complex got hit some of the hotels and things we had a transformer that went out so that's why we didn't have the show last week so uh, we're going to keep things moving right along and uh, moving right along so I hope to see you guys next week okay with that my loves continue dishing tea everywhere and I'll see you again here next week Wednesday okay ciao